good morning, everyone. Pray everyone's having a good Thursday so far. And we are going to go ahead and move on to our devotion and continuing on. I felt I should do a, a cheer or something after Brother Andrew came out doing jumping jacks and, and exercising yesterday in his devotion. Uh, I chuckled a little bit at that. I usually chuckle at a lot of things that he does and says. He's uh, gifted in uh, humor for certain. Uh, but this morning we're going to talk about Romans 8 and 11, talking about that same power that raised Christ from the dead, uh, that same spirit that lives inside of us. Um, and if we was going to do a cheer, we could have done this one. We've got spirit. Yes, we do. Uh, for those of you that's been to a lot of ball games, you know it. Uh, we got spirit. How about you? And then the other side repeats the same thing. We got spirit. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about you? And then uh, one of them will start off with we've got more. We've got more. And truly this morning as Christians, as children of God, we can say um, we've got the spirit, um, you know, not necessarily more spirit, but we, we have the spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit, the most powerful spirit that lives and dwells inside of us. Um, so our scripture, as we said, was verse 11. But if we back up to verse 10, they kind of go hand in hand. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness, not our righteousness, but the righteousness of our heavenly father. Um, but it's the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. And it does. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. And I can still remember the day. I don't remember all the details, but I do remember the day. Um, when, when Christ's spirit entered in me, I was at a revival and I was a, a young rambunctious one uh, that didn't like to sit in a pew, but was at a revival. I think it was on a Thursday night at Esterville Free Will Baptist um, when God spoke to me and I went to the altar. And, and at that point in time, um, you know, this old mortal body and as an 11 year old, don't think I didn't think a whole lot about dying or anything and didn't feel many aches and pains and things like that. Um, but even then, uh, from the time we're born, our bodies, you know, are growing older and these mortal bodies will pass away. But the spirit, that spirit came and lived in me. Um, and, and it's a new spirit each and every day. It gives me newness of life. Uh, and, and when you cross reference Romans 8, 10 and 11, my Bible took me to Romans 6, 4 uh, through 6. It says, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in a newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing that our old man is crucified with him that our body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So we are no longer slaves to sin. And we'll come back to those verses here in just a minute. Um, one more verse of scripture that we've got here from Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5. And verse 1 says, For we know, that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Verse two, for in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so, be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Not for that we should be unclothed, but clothed upon. That mortality might be swallowed up in life. And so talking about these mortal bodies that we live in, uh, that word tabernacle there is, um, could be interpreted as tent. Okay. And obviously a tent is not a permanent dwelling place. Um, you know, tents are going to fade away much quicker, uh, than a house would. And, 
um, that's what we're referenced to, that these lives that we live, it says life is but a vapor. We're here for a while uh, and, and then life is gone. And it says, but we groan, we, we, we desire to have a building, a permanent house, um, not made with human hands, but one that is eternal in the heavens. Um, and, you know, I guess the older we get, the more uh, our groanings, um, I guess, become more common. I definitely know that I groan more, not necessarily about being uh, grouchy. My wife may disagree with that, but just groan because, again, things that we once did and didn't really bother us, um, you know, it's we can feel a little bit more um, aches and pains and, and we groan a little bit because why? These mortal bodies, uh, they they are not, you know, no matter how hard we work uh, to preserve them, it's just a, it's a matter of life that in time, time's going to win. And, you know, uh, gravity starts taking his place. And I like what J. Vernon McGee says. And normally when we quote him, we're quoting uh, some of his theology or some of his references to the scriptures. But he talks about groaning and his wife telling him he needs to set up straight. But as he gets older and our body starts slumping down and slumping over, that gravity's taking its place. And she's like, you know, you need to square your shoulders up, stand up straight. And he's like, I can't. Um, I, I laughed at that a little bit, but that's, that's what's happening to all of us. Um, but the good news is we're not talking in this devotion uh, about these old bodies we live in, but we're talking about what lives in these bodies. And that being the spirit, the spirit of God, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Um, and that's what we're talking about with the gospel. We should live every day. Uh, our everyday lives manifesting. And that word manifesting means displaying. We should put on display this resurrected life. Because guess what? We can't boast in this resurrected life because we didn't do anything. Um, and Brother Andrew shared with us this chart uh, in his devotion yesterday. And and it's the, it's the gospel. It's what we use in Nicaragua when we go and explain it in the villages. That Jesus came. Uh, he came to this earth. He left the, the portals of heaven. Why? Because they need we needed a sacrifice. Okay. And he died on an old rugged cross, the cross that was uh, a symbol of shame and suffering uh, that should have been ours. But he died in our stead, in our place. But because of the power that he had, that death could not hold him. Uh, he was in the grave for three days. But after that, he rose again. And he ascended to heaven. And that's where he's at right now. And he's making uh, plans. He says that he goes to prepare a place for us. That where he is, that we can be there with him also. Um, and, and now we're and we're anticipating this here. Here's where the groaning comes in. We groan and we, we anticipate with earnest desire that he is coming back. He's coming back to get us. Um, and that we don't have to, you know, uh, be subject to the things of this world no longer. And, you know, as much as we enjoy, um, you know, doing things, being around our family, uh, getting outside, still like to try to go and play a little ball occasionally. And, you know, we find there's things that we, we really enjoy here on this earth. But we also know this, that we wasn't made for this area. Uh, we wasn't made for this life here uh, but that we was made for a life that's coming. And, and so we're here and we're going to serve and we're going to work and we're going to uh, spread the gospel that while we're here, but we know this, that he's coming back and where we're going, there's not going to be any pandemics. There's not going to be any uh, protesting because everything's going to be perfect. And, and we're going to be at home with our father. Uh, and we need to walk with that every day with that reminder. You know, I think that would, allow us to walk maybe a little bit taller, a little bit more upright, a little bit more of a smile on our face, knowing this, you know, we're just visiting. Um, we're just visiting this place where we're at right now. Um, but we talked about baptism and that means to immerse or to identify with and pastor does a very good job every time that we've had the privilege of uh, baptizing new converts, that they are identifying with Christ, that when we go and we immerse in the water, um, 
we are symbolizing the death of Christ. And then when we are raised up to, to a newness of life, we take on a new body and um, a new identity. And that's what Paul is reminding the Romans of here. And he's also reminding us of in those verses that I shared with you uh, in Romans 6. Um, in verse 4, we get the gospel. Okay. And in those verses there, he tells us, Therefore, we are buried with him by his baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in a newness of life. And then there in verse five, he talks about the future hope that we have, not just in this life, but that same power is going to take us home one day and we'll have a future resurrection. You know, when we got baptized, that was just a symbol to the world, an outward display that, that we've changed that Christ has changed us um, and that we walk in a newness of life. But we have that yearning, uh, that hope for that future resurrection to where these bodies are going to be changed in for new ones. And verse six, uh, and the promise of a new life. So as our app on our Bible says, uh, the Bible app that we're using uh, for this week, that we are chosen. Uh, and we should remind ourselves daily of the gospel, remind ourselves daily to share the gospel, but also remind ourselves daily of what the gospel has done for us, that we get to walk in the newness of life and that we have a power. Uh, we have the Holy Spirit living in us. And I pray that that is um, if you're if, if you're not able to claim that this morning, uh, you can. You can. It's as simple as the. The symbols that we've got up here, that you understand that as a sinner, um, Christ knew that there needed to be a price paid. And so therefore he came, uh, he left the perfections of heaven and came to dwell in this sinful world. But yet he was without sin, became the perfect lamb, the, un the unblemished sacrifice that died on the cross for your sins, for my sins. He arose. And that's what separates Christianity from other religions. Our God's still alive. He's not a uh, knickknack on the wall or a little um, man-made idol or anything else. He, he's a risen Savior. Uh, and he's going to prepare a place for us and that he's coming back. And I pray that that will uh, bless your heart this morning. And we remind you that um, if you're tuning in and you're, going to church somewhere else. That's awesome. I pray that you get planted and you grow where you're at. If you don't have a church, we'd love to have you at Mount Olive. Um, we're playing the weather still right now, seeing what's going on for Sunday, whether we'll be in the gym or back outside. Um, we're blessed to have options and thank God for that. But we pray that you have a, just a blessed and super day. We love you. And uh, let's go in prayer, but let's also walk with the newness a little pep in our step, knowing that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. We love you. Have a great day.